Okay, this is the tutorial for Tarzan of the Apes. Uh, this particular tutorial deals with the assessment that will be taken. It, it's a short writing assessment and it consists of 10 questions. Of those 10 questions, you are to pick five to write on in paragraph form, good strong paragraphs, a uh, minimum of five sentences and uh, <clears throat> of the sentences that you will use make sure that as you're writing it uh, each sentence is properly written as best as possible but what I'm really looking for in this is detail examples from the story um, concrete elements used uh, to show specific examples for the question that's being asked uh, five sentences being the minimum, however, uh, it is encouraged to write more than five sentences, uh, especially since you will be utilizing or you will have the ability to utilize all the journal entries that you've been using uh, so far in the last three weeks for this assessment. Okay, so of the questions, uh, here are some of the questions and I will review uh, some of the possibilities or examples uh, of the question. Uh, the first one is how does primitivism differ from savagery? And let's let's break that down what savagery is and primitivism is. And if you're a primitive, it, it is essentially that you are you are raised uh, without prior knowledge, without uh, academics, without uh, behavior modification. Essentially, as a primitive, you behave as an animal. And you, as an animal, you are uh, raised as, uh, in the element of, your, of, of the nature that surrounds you. Uh, savagery, on the other hand, if you're savage, that means that you are violent. You are uh, insistently uh, violent in the sense that uh, you're raised among your peers and you beat, you kill, you maim, you rape. Uh, this is savagery. Uh, savagery is a known element, something that you do because you enjoy it uh, on a on an almost evil level, uh, such as within human savagery can be considered murder or rape or uh, you know bullying uh, to the degree of, of violence upon the individual that you are bullying. Primitivism is survival essentially. If you if you kill, you don't kill because you enjoy to kill. You you kill because it is a need, uh, because it's a territorial dispute, or uh, you know you're being attacked by uh, for food, things of that nature. In the novel, who is primitive and who is savage? And obviously, when we look at primitives, we could we could say very easily that that Kerchak or Tarzan or Kala uh, are essentially primitives. They were born and raised amongst uh, you know the jungle whereas savage those are individuals you know who are uh, you know the ship's crew that mutinies and kills the officers and uh, uh, individuals in the story as far as savage you know you, you look at uh, uh, even uh, the individual who Jane is engaged to and the fact that he wants her just because he wants her not because he loves her because he needs her and so it, that is a savage motive uh, you know anytime you have uh, you know snipes how he kills crew members and how his crew members kill him with a, you know, with a pickaxe into his head. I mean, that's an example of savage. Savage is when uh, Bonga, basically, those people, they they attack enemies and then they eat them and they burn them at the stake and, and before they burn them they stab them to death and they you know and they use their skeletons as as uh, symbols of uh, status or uh, you know statues. That is the difference between primitive and savage. Another question, what technology does Tarzan employ to kill Tublat? And what ways does he show himself to be superior to his ape family? Well, his superiority to his ape family comes from his intelligence. He's not a one-dimensional thinker uh, exposed to his emotions. He is a thinking individual who can use strategy and he can use his, his other senses besides just blunt strength. 
He uses his ability to uh, climb, to use the elements around him as weapons as opposed to just sheer ferocity. Um, he's superior because uh, not only can he do what they do as far as climbing and, and uh, running and jumping and swinging and, and eat and you know eating the same elements that they do, but he adapts to the elements. He swims. He uses rope to uh, basically detract by, you know, uh, hindering the ability to use legs, arms, um, and, you know, the technology that he uses is, is the same thing with a knife, using the knife to plunge into the different apparatus of the body, uh, as well as using his strength. Uh, what qualities does Burroughs believe one should find in a true man? And how does Tarzan demonstrate these qualities? Well, Burroughs, being the author, he looks at a true man as someone who uh, doesn't take, but, uh, you know, he earns, and what he earns he takes. Uh, a true man has honor, and they are not confined to uh, the elements of of uh, materialism you know they don't need things to be happy uh, they don't need gold they don't need uh, uh, money uh, for a true man a true man expresses his feelings outright he doesn't hide behind them he is straightforward he is uh, you know naked to the world but at the same time does not shun or feel any embarrassment towards what he looks like um, a true man will defend the person that he loves uh, without fear. Uh, a true man it may be afraid, but he does not let his fear uh, primarily uh, basically control his emotions or control his actions. He engages in the, the uh, battle or competition uh, for food, for the one he loves, for protection of, of those that he cares about, like his tribe or his people. Um, and, uh, you know, money is irrelevant at that st stage. It's stature that, that a true man embodies. Uh, you know, a true man also is, is uh, you know, built and strong, aware of himself. <clears throat> Uh, how is Tarzan's family background finally established, and why in the end does he not make it known to Jane? And his family background is that he was the son of Lord Greystoke, uh, John Clayton Greystoke. And basically, uh, his family background was established through uh, different means. Uh, his mother's locket, which was a jewel-encrusted gift upon uh, being wedded by Lord Greystoke with diamonds around it. And then there is, of course, his father's signet ring, which has the crest of Greystoke on it. There is his, and, and one of the most important features, of course, is the uh, journal in which uh, Greystoke kept their uh, daily, kind of like a diary, but he put the fingerprints of his son, his infant son, in it. Uh, and this basically will be established as D'Arenat takes Tarzan to France where he is fingerprinted and the fingerprints come back 100% that he is the son of Greystoke and that he uh, has claim and title to all the lands, uh, money, and everything that is in the Greystoke possession. The reason he does not make it known to Jane is because Jane is engaged to uh, Clayton at this point and as an honorable notion, Clayton um, is going to take care of Jane if Tarzan reveals his true nature. Not only does it affect Jane because it makes Clayton a pauper, I mean, which is someone who's poor because the money that he has he's inherited, and uh, this would affect Jane because then they would be living in squalor and have no money to support themselves and Tarzan would have it all. And so um, he doesn't make it known to Jane because ultimately materialism to Tarzan is irrelevant as a fact that if Jane loves him, she loves him for who he is, you know, his, her savage. And that is essentially the nature of that. Number five, another question. How are the French rescuers able to overpower the native blacks? What larger point is Burroughs making about colonialism? And what is civilization's great equalizer against poorly developed people? 
the French rescuers are able to overpower the native blacks with their weapons, their guns, essentially. <clears throat> And, and their ability to blow up and uh, kill, uh, you know, lethally from a distance with their projectile weapons. Uh, what Burroughs is making about colonialism, that in colonialism, you know, when he's talking about uh, man and their ability to barter and build... <clears throat> Uh, weapons of destruction is that uh, generally speaking the countries or the the nations who uh, dwell into the science and uh, you know earmark uh, the ability for technology and the use of warfare and combat they are the ones who generally control and have the power and, and are the ones who uh, dominate uh, over lesser individuals and so when it asks what civilizations great great equalizer against poorly developed people well weapons weapons are their equalizer because when diplomacy fails basically uh, you've got warfare and uh, warfare tends to go to the victor who has the more guns the better technology uh, next question in the novel why do violent episodes occur what causes them and do only bad characters engage in violence? To what extent is violence acceptable or even laudable? Acceptable, you know. Um, uh, when we talk about violent episodes, why do they occur? Because it's it's Burroughs' effort in showing that it is in man's nature to be violent and cruel. Even though we are civilized or we pretend to be civilized, uh, we are still at the core animals and we give in to those animal instincts of desire or lack of self control or violence. And so, uh, you know, uh, these episodes occur to show either violence in the nature of how man can allow things such as greed to overcome their sense of their sense of righteousness, um, or violence in terms of in in how violent the jungle is, where there is no rules other than uh, survive or be killed. Uh, what causes these things? Well, there's lots of different things. There's money uh, in exchange of wealth. There is servitude, uh, keeping people under your thumb and they rise up against. Um, there is survival for food, survival against predators who attack, um, survival against, uh, you know, religious persecution, you know, I mean, religiously cannibals. Uh, do only bad characters engage in violence? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, you've got Clayton and and uh, his wife and Tarzan, Jane, all those individuals, they engage in violence, but they do so to protect themselves and to survive the, you know, the elements against them in, in finding sustenance and food and protection. Whereas, you know, uh, you have to what extent is violence acceptable? Is it acceptable to survive ultimately? Uh, those who put aside violence and allow themselves to be victims, they they tend not to survive. And so, uh, you know, when engaged with an adversary who cannot be reasoned with, such as animals or such as uh, men who have evil intonations of uh, destroying so that they can take what you have, there comes a time when you are able to protect your castle, to protect yourself from that violence that is um, engaging you. Next question. What is Burroughs, the author's judgment uh, of what some might call civilized society? Is it pro, con, something in between? Meaning, does he see both good and bad attributes in our society? And which characters represent these effect, harmful effects of over-civilization in the novel? And Burroughs basically is what what he calls a civilized society is, is when people can communicate with each other, they use goods of uh, services to each other, they have moral and ethical codes to it. Um, and his, what his judgment is on society is a society is not civilized. It is corrupt. And even our highest ranking individuals can be corrupted. They use power such as wealth um, and money and stature to abuse others who are lower than them or to get what they want. And so, uh, in a civilized society, he continually shows how those who are in a higher 
uh, level of, of authority don't always, you know, they, they can be overrun by the dregs of society through murder and mayhem. Whereas also, as we see when we get into Americas, those with power are the ones who own wealth and who have money and they pretty much dictate. Um, is this a pro or con? You know, it could be both. It could be a little bit in between. There are good and, and bad attributes in our society. You know, there are laws that are established to help protect those. Uh, however, laws are broken all the time and there are retributions to them. However, how do you protect the innocent is basically the question. And in the case of Tarzan, he doesn't look at, at uh, you know, laws as opposed to what's right and what's wrong. You know, and if he sees a wrong, he uses his strength and his agility and, and powers to do away with the issue, whereas laws would ask for court hearing and things of that nature. Uh, it asks which characters represent the harmful effects of over civilization. Well, that's e easy. You know, uh, there's the individual who wishes to, who forces, uh, you know, Jane into marrying him. Uh, there's snipes. There's, you know, uh, you know, the at the very beginning, the individual who who basically takes over the mutiny. You know, and strands. Uh, John and his wife. I mean, these are over civilizations as far as that's concerned. Another question To what extent does Jane have an effect on Tarzan? Is she civilizing force? How does Tarzan affect Jane? And to what ex uh, extent Jane has on Tarzan? Tarzan's never seen a female. He's, he's, and it is a natural. Uh, it's in the natural order that all species have an opposite, a male and a female. And it is a natural concept, whether they are told or not told, that uh, individuals are meant to be together. And so Tarzan has the effect of he's never protected truly anybody or anything or had to carry anything other than himself and his mother Kala. And so when he sees Jane, the effect is is that this could be a partner. This is somebody that he is drawn to, that he is attracted to physically. And as he learns and talks with her, he become, he sees how delicate she is and fragile she is and he wants to protect her. And so that is a civilizing manner. And it, his only goal is to make her happy. So whatever makes her unhappy, he is willing to change or to adapt to, to be her ideal. And how does Tarzan affect Jane? Well, she's always the, the, the prim and proper, finding the right answer, you know, making the right choices, not overstepping and, and uh, being impulsive. And so she's very particular about what she chooses and, and the, the role that she wants to go. And Tarzan's something different. She's attracted to him in a in a sense that there is no um, there is no proper you know he doesn't have money he's not rich he can't even communicate with her and yet here's somebody that she is not only attracted to but can see the kindness in him and the protective nature and she when she's around him she feels safe it is a it is a feeling that she's never had with anyone else and it is something that she wishes to engage in. Um, another question, what role does nature, hereditary or blood, play in man's development? And what role does nurture, experience play? Well, when you're talking about hereditary or blood, as far as the role is concerned, there are many times in, in Tarzan's nature where he could have killed, but he didn't. Uh, something withheld him back. He could have taken Jane for his own and basically, you know, had his way with her. And yet, hereditary played in to the fact that he should not do that. That it, it it's it's something that is given, not taken. And so, uh, as he is develop as he develops as a man, even though he has never had any kind of of, of tutelage on whether he should just kill indiscriminately, man. Uh, he doesn't just kill just to kill. Um, he judges and then makes a decision on whether or not. Um, and he protects those who are the innocent that, that can't take care of themselves. And so, you know, on a hereditary or blood level, it is innate. It is an innate nature in us to know right from wrong when to kill, when not to kill, when our actions are bad or when they're not bad. And what role does nurture and experience play in, in and the nurturing aspect or the experiences is, is comes from, you know, he was nurtured by Kala. So he has a, an innate desire to protect his tribe even though uh, he doesn't look like them or he is not one of them. But he finds a way to find acceptance among them. And so as he 
he gets experience and nurturing from Dierrenot, he learns more about man's world and his place in it as well. And lastly, the question, what does Burroughs think about race? What unquestionable assumptions does he seem to have? And does he ever portray his own race in a negative fashion? And when we talk about race, we, you know, there's black and white in this one in particular. And, and that, you know, in the, the beginning, the, the reason that um, Greystoke even leaves in the first place is because there's, there's the rumor that the white officers are mistreating blacks. And so they're off to find out if there's any truth to that and they ever even make it to their destination. However, the black race that he comes to portray from Bonga is one that is cannibalistic. And so Tarzan himself becomes aggregated in the nature that he does not like blacks and he does not trust them. He thinks they are violent, savage beasts and that they should be killed because of their nature. Um, and so, you know, his... his lesson is to strike first instead of waiting for them to strike and you know Burroughs even though he makes that assumption about the black race he also makes a lot of assumptions about the white race as well as being very violent violent towards blacks violent towards itself almost like it eats itself the unquestionable assumptions that he seems to have is he portrays his race negatively in the fact in the fact that uh, they're always fighting for stature power money, greed, and uh, also bragging rights. I mean, even in the form of Clayton, when he is rescued by Tarzan, he's very grateful for to this man. But then once he finds out that Jane is, likes him, then all of a sudden he's ready to roll him under the bus. And so here's a man who's supposed to be a man of honor, a man of respect, a man of, of stature, and yet he's willing to throw someone who saved his life again and again and provided them with food and 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 protection under the bus so that he can have his, his girl. And so... Uh, what Burroughs shows about man in general and race itself is that all races, man or black, white, doesn't matter, it, they still have the same issues of power. And, and it doesn't matter who they are and how civilized they become, they still are negative. All right, those are the questions. Hopefully you paid attention, you've got the notes, and of those there are a few that you want to write on. And hopefully those will be the ones that you choose. Good luck and...